our longest trusted English newspaper since 1898. Now available digitally. Computer, order the Manila Times Digital Edition. Subscribed. Get the Manila Times Digital Edition for less than 2 pesos and 50 centavos per day when you sign up for one year. The Manila Times, new source of choice, trusted since 1898. Good day. Here are the stories for the Manila Times for Saturday, May 21, 2022. Heidelin retains weightlifting title. Heidelin Diaz emerged the winner in a battle of Olympic champions to retain her title in the 55 kilogram weightlifting category Friday in the 31st Southeast Asian Games in Hanoi, Vietnam. Diaz's victory provided one of the three gold medals that added to the country's medal harvest for the day. The other two came from esports and judo. It also provided a bright note on a day when the Philippines slid to fifth place in the medal standings. Diaz, who gave the country its first Olympic gold medal in Tokyo last year, lifted 92 kg in the snatch and 114 kg in the clean and jerk for a total of 206 kg, 3 kilos more than the tally of 2016 Rio Olympics gold medalist Sani Kuntanasan of Thailand. Diaz was trailing Sanikun in the snatch after failing to clear 93 kilograms. The tie then lifted 110 kilograms attempt. Sanikun tried to match the Filipino's lift but was unable to do so in her third attempt. Diaz tried to add the icing to her cake by going for a new SEA Games record of 121 kilograms. She failed but still managed a smile. Natasha Beteob of Indonesia lifted 188 kilograms to finish third. Partalist Winner's Proclamation Delayed the proclamation of the winning party's groups will have to wait until the results of the special elections in Lanao del Sur on May 24 are canvassed. Commission on Elections or Comelec Commissioner George Erwin Garcia said there will be a delay because computing the allocation of party seats in the House of Representatives is complicated. Poll-related violence in Tuburan Lanao del Sur forced the Comelec to declare a failure of election in that town. Special elections were scheduled for May 24. The commission was hoping to finish canvassing the party list returns by next week and proclaim the winners immediately after. That seems unlikely now. Garcia said allocating party list seats is problematic because there is no specific provision in the Party List System Act or Republic Act 7941 on how the allocation should be computed. COVID cases on the rise in Metro Manila. COVID-19 infections in Metro Manila went up by 19% during the week of May 13 to 19, the independent Okta Research Group reported on Friday. Okta said there were 71 cases a day during that week, higher than the 59 cases during the previous week. Okta Senior Fellow Dr. Guido David also reported an increase in the average daily attack rate to 0.50 cases per 100,000 population from 0.42. The reproduction number has also gone up to 0.9 from 0.76, David said. A reproduction number of less than one indicates that viral transmission among infected individuals is still under control. Despite the rising cases, the positivity rate remained at 1.2%, and the healthcare utilization rate and the intensive care unit utilization also stayed under low risk. Octa's indicators are different from that of the Department of Health or DOH, which relies on COVID Act Now figures used by the Harvard School of Public Health. In a statement, the DOH said that the slight rise in cases did not translate to increased admissions or utilization rates. It also said Metro Manila is still classified as minimal risk since its two-week growth rate remained at negative 17%. The DOH reminded the public that to prevent another COVID surge, they should continue to follow the minimum health protocols and get themselves vaccinated and boosted. U.S. to name warship after Filipino sailor hero. The United States Navy will name one of its future destroyers after Filipino sailor who rescued two fellow crewmen when their ship caught fire more than a century ago. 
In a tweet Thursday, U.S. Secretary of the Navy Carlos del Toro announced that the next RLA Bird Class destroyer will be named after Fireman Second Class Teles Foro Trinidad, who joined the U.S. Navy in 1901. PH stamps sovereignty over West Philippine Sea Islands. The Philippine Coast Guard or PCG continues to expand the country's maritime domain awareness in the West Philippine Sea, this time by establishing command observation posts on Likas Island, Lawak Island, and Parola Island. Coast Guard Admiral Artemio Abu said the PCG's task force Kaligtasan sa Karagatan constructed a smart house and installed radio communications on the three islands. The construction was carried out with the largest Coast Guard contingent in the West Philippine Sea putting up the five COPs, 30-foot-long navigational buoys on critical islands in the area from May 12 to 14. Abu said this COPs will optimize the strategic deployment of PCG assets by monitoring the movement of merchant ships in surrounding waters and communicating maritime incidents to the PCG National Headquarters in Port Area in Manila. Scholars and academics sign manifesto versus fake news. More than a thousand scholars and academics have signed the manifesto in defense of historical truth and academic freedom, expressing their opposition to all forms of disinformation, fabrication, manipulation, deceptive rebranding, and propaganda on social media and other digital forms. They claim that the presumptive electoral victory of Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. and Sada Duterte Carpio signals an intensified struggle over historical knowledge and pedagogy. The erasure of dramatic personal and collective memories of plunder and human rights violation under martial law and unbridled myth-making about a so-called golden age presided over by the conjugal dictatorship of Ferdinand and Imelda Marcos. In the manifesto, they pledged to combat all attempts at historical revisionism that distort and falsify history to suit the interests of the Marcuses and their allies and fortify their power. Similarly, they vowed to protect the integrity and independence of cultural institutions including the Department of Education or DEPED, the Department of Science and Technology or DOST, the Commission on Higher Education or CHED, the National Historical Commission of the Philippines or NHCP, the National Library of the Philippines, or NLP, the National Archives of the Philippines, or NAP, the National Commission on Culture and the Arts, or NCCA, and state universities and colleges. Over to business, the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, or BSP, remains optimistic. The Philippine economy would continue to grow even under the new administration. Because of the improved COVID-19 situation in the country, BSP Governor Benjamin Jokno is optimistic the second quarter economic expansion will be much better than the faster-than-expected 8 0.3% gross domestic product or GDP growth in the first three months of the year. Another reason for Jokna's optimism is that the country will experience a seamless transition of power as the winning candidate has an overwhelming majority for the first time in history. In other sports news, the University Athletic Association of the Philippines, or UAAP, cited safety and health reasons on why it decided not to allow drummers from performing in the Season 84 Children's Competition, or CDC, at the Mall of Asia Arena on Sunday. Drummers are usually an integral part of the CDC as they rev up the crowd during the event. The eight drum groups of the UAAP participating schools have released a statement on Thursday, appealing to the league for them to be allowed to perform on Sunday. UAAP President Emmanuel Kalanog said that the UAAP board members will need to discuss the said appeal. Antonio Contreras and Danton Remoto are today's front-page columnists. Contreras talks about the new major players in the media block, while Remoto promotes his English version of the book Banaag at Sikat, which also means Regents and Sunrise in English. Today's editorial calls on the government to exercise caution in consideration the expansion of mining. Read a full version of the paper's opinion section or listen to the Voice of the Times. 
For more news and information, get a copy of the Manila Times on print. Subscribe to its digital edition or log on to www.manilatimes.net. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. And keep up with the Times. This is EJ Gomez reporting.